first of all, I'd like to point out this guy is not an expert, but he points, well, basically no one is. He puts it in layman's terms. We're going to listen to what this dickhead has to say. I'm going to completely debunk him. And the first thing I, and the second thing I'd like to say is that I like being me. I don't want to sound like this fucking guy or any normal fucking queer fucking seeming white person or any quote unquote normal fucking person. So last time we talked about pot and alcohol and how they change the way your brain works, but this time we're going to talk more about how these substances and other drugs change how you feel. And beyond that, what happens when you have a neurological condition or something's just not working right. And so a good place to start is with depression, right? It is one of the most prevalent conditions in the entire world, and it is also one of the most difficult to fix conditions because like other neurological conditions we don't really know exactly what's going on mm, so point number one they admit that they don't know what's going on so they're giving toxic pills that kill 500,000 people a year in western countries alone and they cause people to do mass shootings but they don't really know what's going on and so serotonin you might have heard of serotonin it's one of the neurotransmitters in your brain except it's part of a small group that deal primarily with kind of how you feel. Before anyone says anything, because there's, there's, a, there's a horrible myth out there that these psych meds have nothing to do with withdrawals. I want you to ask yourself, do crackheads kill people when they're high on crack? Or do they kill people when they're withdrawing from toxic pharmaceutical drugs or cocaine trying to get their next fix? And so if you look at someone who suffers from depression, then they might be taking SRIs, and SRIs are serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It's, it's a fancy name for basically, it makes it so there's more serotonin in your brain. Now what we know about serotonin is, if you don't have enough of it, you are likely to be depressed. If you have too much of it, there's a condition called serotonin syndrome in which you get- I kid you not, this is how it's explained to psychiatrists, and this is how they explain it to their patients. You know, what they're told really much is, fucking nonsensical bullshit. Now, how they explain it is nonsensical bullshit. Very, very sick, and it's potentially fatal. But in between, there's a sweet spot. There's a, there's a good place for it. As to what it does, it seems to involve animal gut decisions. I'd also like to bring up the fact that our experiences on record change our serotonin level. If you fucking win the lotto, well, guess what? Your serotonin naturally increases. Your mood naturally elevates. So we know the environmental factors and the circumstances of our lives and our stage of mind or state of mind has to do with our serotonin as well. So there's ways to raise it in the long term and in the short term by changing the environment, by addressing your philosophies. And there's a bunch of scum who want to destroy Christianity, which is the best way to improve your serotonin levels, as opposed to Buddhism, which teaches non-attachment and certain things like that, which, have, which has teamed up with mental health. Oh, you know, I'm not gonna get. Let's just finish this for now. I'll get into that later if there's time. It seems to be resource-based. How good are you getting resources for yourself, or or establishing a dominance even? And so, there was this weird study where they took a bunch of crustaceans and they found the males that were beta males, and they injected them with serotonin. And then some of these males became the new alphas in their communities. They became strong and. And, and powerful and socially know, aggressive. To do anything. And we'll get in to that. humans, we see a, a sort of different behavior. But basically, you can take someone who, who has social anxiety and and might be suffering from a social certain anxiety. deficit. And if you restore it, then they might feel more comfortable conversing with people oh, or wow. being in a social situation. And you, you can see how they see how they act like oh you know it's, you know they sell you this idea and they're trying to sound so sincere and so on, but they're really horrible horrible people who have sold out to Big Farm. Parallel that to being more successful at getting resources because we're social creatures. But again, it's a very complicated idea. It's hard to just understand exactly what this does. And so there's another neurotransmitter just like it called dopamine. And we think a lack of this stuff is what causes ADHD. It's what Ritalin controls. Ritalin makes the dopamine levels go up. And dopamine, we think, is sort of a reward neurotransmitter. It's, it's part of the reward pathway in your brain. And it's what makes you feel really good when you've done something great. And it's what makes you feel like crap when you haven't really done anything lately. You just have been lying around. It's, it's what makes you proud when you got an A or you helped your wife out with the dishes or whatever, right? It's, it's, it's this feeling of... 
what he's saying is debunking his own argument. He just said it's what makes you proud when you got an A. So therefore, the things that happen in your life affect your dopamine. So wouldn't it be much more logical to take all this money that you people we waste in mental health, thousands, billions of dollars a year, and put it into things that make the country a better place so that we naturally feel better instead of having these toxic drugs that kill 500,000 people a year? Of, of accomplishment. And we think that if you don't have enough of it, it might be really hard to be goal-oriented and get things done. But if you have too much of it, then you're in a new problem because drugs like cocaine or, or other highly addictive substances, they make the dopamine levels in your brain go up very high, insanely high. So high that your brain starts to think that that's the new baseline for dopamine. That's the new normal level that it expects. And so now, after having done a drug like that, your brain won't be as impressed when you do the dishes, or you get an A, or, or you, you, know, you get a nice paycheck bonus. It's, it's, it's just not as impressed anymore. Your brain's chemistry is always trying to even itself out. So if you surge it with one thing, it, it won't listen to other stuff as much. Or so if you're missing something, it might amplify the things that are there. Because your brain's always trying to balance itself out. If there's too much of something, it'll try to downregulate that. It'll Again, he says something to prove himself wrong. Although he did make a good point about the, you know, the dopamine. I think we all understand that to a certain level that your brain gets thrown off by drugs. Okay, so the dopamine level, it's like, okay, you know, I agree with that. But when you said to balance it out, the brain is always trying to balance itself out. You said it right there. It's always trying to correct itself. So leave it the fuck alone and let it correct itself. Guide it along with maybe therapeutic activities, which you don't need to see a therapist for or go to the fucking psych ward or spend money for. Help it with nutritious food. Let it correct itself. Don't fuck it up more. Try to make less of that in the future. And if there's not enough, it's supposed to try to make more of something so it all balances out. The problem then is if you do one of these addictive drugs, then then now other things in your life just aren't as important. Nothing else is giving you that rush of dopamine. Now. Yeah, for the fucking first six months. You know, for the next six months, you smoke a lot of weed for a long time, and, you know, you stop. For six months, your brain's going to be all come fucked up. But it's going to rebalance itself after about six months when it notices, hey, you know, this is how it is. And especially as you do therapeutic activities, you stimulate the brain naturally. God, fucking so... A feeling of accomplishment, except taking drugs. And so now your brain actually starts to poison you from the inside. It starts to tell you that you won't matter. You'll never feel like you've accomplished anything unless you take more drugs and get those dopamine levels back where they're supposed to be. And this isn't just dopamine. This is other things, too, like serotonin. It Let's not forget that there's things like sex which have the same, you know, effects as drugs. That's why they call people sex addicted and they treat it, you know, psychologically and with therapy and so on and so forth. Because sex also raises the levels of these things, serotonin and dopamine, and just like drugs, okay? Endorphins, again, you're making yourself feel good, and then when you don't have sex for a while, what happens? You become grumpy. But if you go a long time, it's not so bad. But if you've been having sex every day for a fucking year, then you stop, and you go a couple of weeks without it, and you start getting miserable. You know, but maybe after fucking a year or two, you might return to normal, and I'm kind of used to it. But anyway. It's the same thing with fucking drugs, but... If you smoke pot, then you might feel your serotonin levels go up for a little while shit. after. What the Bunch of bootlicking fucking blanks want to call me now. I'll call you back. I'm in the middle of making a video. Bye. But you smoke. But if your body is so used to... I just say bootlicking... I would say blanks. Okay, I meant the food. Damn it. Being high that you expect <laughs> those levels to be raised all the time, then when you're not high on marijuana, your body will actually not produce enough serotonin and now you'll be anxious and nervous again as though you're suffering from uh, a deficiency and so the conclusion of all of this is that it's damn complicated so if you look at schizophrenics there's a lot of research out there that says that too much dopamine in the system might be part of the problem and psychosis in general say, might just come from a lack the video. of the neurotransmitter we talked about last time that helps you make new memories or learn things and drugs that artificially make these exact same changes on your brain end up producing kind of the same result. And that's why there's a lot of similarities between people who are high on PCP and people suffering from legitimate psychosis. And there's something to be said there about how this, this very, very powerful reward-based behavior 
mixes with a break from reality and produces the, the kind of symptoms that we recognize as psychosis. And if you look at people who suffer from migraines, they have a surge of serotonin right before they get their migraines. And we don't know if that causes it or if it's just a part of it. We really don't know. And the most difficult one, if we can go back to depression, difficult because it's just so prevalent, it is still sort of a mystery. We know that, again, if you, if you put these, these drugs back where they're, they're supposed to be, it, it might solve the problem, but sometimes it doesn't. And when you take these drugs or any other drugs, or even alcohol or, or nicotine, you're changing things in your body that we still don't entirely understand. And so whether or not you do these things is entirely up to you. And if you're interested, there's a lot to look into and learn about because it is absolutely fascinating. But no matter what, we think it's something you should know. Thanks for listening. I mean, when you look at it, okay, how do you end it? Say? He ended by saying, again, they don't understand it. And then he said, whether or not you do these things is entirely up to you. I, I assume he's referring to the illegal drugs. But what about the prescription drugs, okay? So now, the, what every patient was meant to know and to be given the option about was that either you want to accept the burden of taking toxic psychi psychiatric pills or you um, um, accept, you know, your symptoms, okay? That was always supposed to be, you know, you're given the option. If you're a fucking schizophrenic, you say, you know what? I'm better off, you know, the voices aren't so bad, you know, the, you know, I only have fucking hallucinations once a year, whatever. For whatever reason, you decide that, you know what, I can live with this. And you are supposed to have the option to live with that. And anyone who says otherwise or tries to covertly drug you or force medicate you, you should kill them to defend yourself, period. That's how it is meant to be. That is constitutionally correct. Pursuit of happiness the right, the freedom of speech unhindered by oppressive psychiatric institutions and punk-ass law enforcement, this being po the political abuse of law enforcement and mental health, okay? Now, let's take my situation, which is even worse. You don't have any symptoms. Nothing is hindering you in life. Nothing is keeping you from functioning. You're doing research all day, every day. You're making videos. You're doing martial arts. You have no problem with your sex life, with women, with your social life. Nothing. Just trolls. Mad at you, trying to help mental health make you look bad. I mean, it is insane to drug somebody who is perfectly content with their mental health. If they went to, I went to a shrink, I wouldn't say, you know, so what's the problem? I don't have any problems. You hearing voices? No. Are you depressed? No. Do you hallucinate? No. The only thing going on is the government has admitted flat out that they're fucking persecuting me for my political beliefs and they're trying to provoke me to go to the psych ward. Other than that, nothing's wrong. A fair and balanced doctor, you know what? You know, you need to get a good lawyer or something. I can't help you. Session's over. Next. Period. Because if you don't report having any symptoms and the person who knows you best in the world the last 14 years says no like when I asked her you know do you think I need psychiatric she's like no like like that's crazy that is insane that somebody would say that the person who knows me best in the world the top psychiatrist in the last 60 years Dr. Thomas Saws to psychiatry is a fucking joke we're trying to fix everyday uh, uh, you know problems with toxic medication and they're making every little thing, every normal human condition into a mental disorder. I mean, it is absolutely insane. And you see, you know, I've been listening to these, these, these presentations and reading about this for 21 years. Okay, just without all that other stuff. Without any of that other stuff, which makes it just completely puts the nails in the coffin. Puts a bunch of nails in the I already put the nail in the coffin. I'm adding extra nails to the coffin just to show you that I'm fucking right and the case is closed. But all that really matters in a free and open society, in any society that claims to be righteous or is, you know, supposed to be righteous or supposed to be somewhere close to it, is that what do I want to choose for myself? Are the symptoms worse or the drugs? Now, if there are no symptoms, then of course the drugs are worse in the covertly and 
force medicate someone is evil and wrong. Thank you.